If you thought YouTube builds were crazy, wait till you hear about this thing that we used to watch called television. Car modding shows peaked in the early 2000s. And today we're gonna look at the most ridiculous, over the top, and downright out of hand builds from these shows. I'm James. Welcome to Drama! Are you one of the millions suffering from playing racing games with a controller? <sighs> well, today's sponsor, Thrustmaster, is here to help. Unlike boring controllers, the Thrustmaster T128 immerses you into the race with real-time force feedback. Navigate every bump on the road, hold tight during collisions, and feel the full weight of your car as you tear through corners. With super precise magnetic pedals and paddle shifters, 13 buttons for remapping, and bright engine speed LEDs, a regular controller just doesn't compare. Unless you think holding down the right trigger is, you know, fun. Yeah. <laughs> Get immersed into your game today with the Thrustmaster T128. It's available right now at GameStop for $199.99, which is an insanely cheap deal for the next-gen force feedback. Plus, they're giving you one month free of Xbox Game Pass with purchase. So go on ahead and click the link below. Jerry, no cheating, dude. One of the earliest and most out of hand modding shows was a little series called Monster Garage. The premise was simple. Team had just $3,000 and seven days to turn an ordinary car into a monster machine. But there were rules, because contrary to popular belief, monsters have rules. It had to look like a car on the outside, but have a secret hidden function, you know? Like a monster. <laughs> like this totally normal school bus pontoon boat, or this cop car that doubles as a donut shop. Cause cops love donuts. But one of the sickest builds from Monster Garage was called Switchblade, a fox body Mustang that was also the world's fastest lawnmower, right? The team installed a functional 48 inch mower deck hidden below the trunk. That meant the builders had to reroute the exhaust to the most logical place that you could think, right behind the driver's head. And then they modified that to shoot flames, which is, a good idea. And of course, it had candy apple green paint job with flames and 100 spoke gold wheels. Jeremiah would love this thing. After it was on the show, Switchblade sold at Barrett Jackson for an astonishing, mind blowing price of $8,000, which is cheaper than my lawnmower. I don't even have a lawn. And somehow, this is the least out of hand car on this list. Next up, we got one of the most iconic car TV shows. I'm talking about overhauling. The premise alone is bat crap bananas, all right? They would pretend to steal someone's unrestored classic car. I'm sure a lot of you out there have non-running project cars. Stolen. Oh, I guess I do too. Imagine if someone stole it. You'd be beside yourself. All right, so they'd steal the car, and as the owner was worried out of their mind, probably calling the cops and stuff, Chip Foos and his gang of little stinkers went full resto mod overhaul on its little car hiney. One of those cars was this 1968 Olds 442, one of the goaded muscle cars of the era. Overhauling kidnapped it, restored it with a very period correct orange and silver paint job, big chrome wheels, modern interior and suspension, and of course, a sound system with lots of Because if you like muscle cars, you like thorn. But what you didn't see is how the crew like really bungled the hell out of this thing. According to the owner of the 442, the overhaul and crew took the car for a joyride and ended up overheating the engine and the transmission. Mm. Then, these little stinkers power washed the engine and somehow got water into the oil. It also fried all the electronics. Now when the owner discovered these issues, nobody from the show would return his calls. He was forced to fix the car himself. Because of the insanity of that story, that makes this car just a little bit more out of hand. But not as out of hand as our next show. Trick My Truck! This show aired on the Country Music Channel and focused on big burly rigs tricked out by the Chrome Shop Mafia, which is a sick name. It even spawned a spinoff called Trick My Trucker, <laughs> where out of shape truck drivers were taught how to exercise, eat right, 
and we're given a style makeover. When other truckers see my hair, they are definitely jealous. I've been on a diet for a little while. It's called the ice cream diet. One of their most out of hand builds was this tribute to Gravedigger because the owner of the car was named Matthew Graves. Get it? They gave it the same treatment as most of the trucks they modified. A back crap load of chrome, underglow, and a big old goofy old paint job. And they made sure to make it slightly different from the actual Gravedigger so they didn't get sued. Needless to say, this show is certifiably out of hand. My truck is my life. And my life's about to change. But I doubt any of you will be surprised that it gets way more out of hand from there. Turns out America wasn't the only country televising ridiculous custom builds in the early 2000s. You don't believe me? Why? When have I ever lied to you? Let me introduce you to a little show called Chop Shop London Garage. No, I'm not talking about steaks, although I wish I was. You see this 1988 Saab 900 Turbo? Pretty normal looking, right? Well, that didn't sit right with Lipu Aulia, the host of the show. He decided to build it into a quote. A Grand Prix gangster car worthy of any Grand Theft Auto. What does that mean? I don't know. This is what it turned into. Besides the body kit, they also built the engine up to make 350 Herspers, and during its unveiling, it did what modified cars do. It freaking broke. Eventually, this car was sold to members of a Volkswagen forum who decided to put it out of its misery by crushing it with a monster truck. Sick. So, I guess you could say it's sort of out of hand. But somehow, guys, somehow, we still have more out of hand cars left to go. Our next show was called Trick It Out. MTV's Tuner Challenge. And unlike most normal build shows, this show pitted teams of car builders against each other in a build-off where the winners got to keep both cars. The teams had 10 days and 15 grand to make the sickest build they could. And this is what they came up with. This EK Honda Civic hatch sits on 24 inch chrome dub quattros with airbag suspension, quilted red leather interior, a 3000 watt stereo, and a giant flat screen to the hatch! They painted it in every primary color and grafted the front end from a Nissan Silvia onto it. Also, completely understandably, they attached a wheelie bar, okay? Despite the fact that it's front wheel drive and they didn't do anything to the engine. If anyone knows where this car is today, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Up next is a more recent show that you may have heard of. I'm talking about Fast and Loud! It followed the crew at Gas Monkey Garage who specialize in restoring barn finds and wrecked exotics. One of the most insane and controversial cars they ever built was a Ferrari F40. A car that nobody in their right mind would or should modify. They started with a wrecked shell that cost $400,000. And over the next month, they dropped another 700 grand repairing and modifying it to be faster and lighter than an original F40. They painted it black and slapped some sick HRE wheels on it. Then they called it a day. The purpose of the show was to sell each car for a profit, but they ended up losing 350 grand after selling it uh, at auction to baseball player Reggie Jackson. Then Reggie sold it and lost even more money. Then the guy he sold it to got arrested for fraud when the car was seized by the government. And that is what I call downright out of hand. Speaking of builds, we're building a couple of new cars right now. Hi, low, coming soon every Friday. New cars. Same Joe. <laughs> Guys, can we all agree to get back to business? Our next outrageous build show features Pitbull. No, not Mr. Worldwide. I'm talking about Steve Pitbull. He teamed up with that guy, Lipu, who built that beautiful sob we looked at earlier. Their show was called Lipu and Pitbull. And their idea of tastefully modified cars looks like this. But one of their most out of hand builds was this Ford Ranchero. They didn't think it looked enough like a Batmobile Dodge Charger pickup truck. So Lipu rolled up his sleeves, got to work and produced this beaut of a U. It was built for the owner of Dub Magazine. So of course it also had ginormous wheels, a quilted leather custom interior, and best of all, tribal flames. What's even more out of hand was that he sold it on eBay later for an absolute steal of $35,000. Now that's what I call 
out of hand. We're almost to the end, folks. Next up is a show about rolling coal and having beards. I'm talking about the Diesel Brothers, not to be confused with the British spinoff, the Betcho Bruvs. One of their craziest builds was the Somersault truck. They shortened the wheelbase and welded on a bunch of tubes on the outside, so when you slam on the brakes, the car does a flip. Why? I don't know. Did I? Do I don't know. If you know, don't tell me. It'll ruin it for me. I love this thing. Look at it. <laughs> the most out of hand part of this is the amount of planning, cutting, fabricating, and science stuff to make it work properly. And yeah, I've heard of rolling coal before, but this is out of hand. <laughs> that brings us to the most out of hand build show of all time. It takes place at a little mom and pop mechanic shop by the name of West Coast Customs. It's my Cali accent. You may have heard about it. It's called Pimp My Ride. The Boss Hawk of early 2000s TV shows. It spawned a ton of imitators. It even had its own video game. The premise, find someone with a completely sad beat up car Pimp it out. Modifying it to suit the owner's specific tastes. One of the wildest builds to come from Pimp My Ride was a 1991 Ford Escort. It was in rough shape, okay? The body had been spray painted. The dashboard was mostly missing. Instead of working AC, it had a house fan plugged into a power inverter. Since the owner was a hip hop dance instructor who wanted to start their own band, Exhibit and his team decided she needed something that exuded a bit more style in class than a Ford Escort. So they grafted an E36 M3 front end onto the car, did a rear end body swap from a Mercedes CLK, installed 18 inch chrome wheels, a rain sensing sunroof, four TV screens, replaced the back seat with 15 inch subs. That's a lot of show. They made no mechanical improvements whatsoever to the original 88 horsepower drivetrain. This Escort just got pimped and for that, Pimp My Ride will go down in history without a doubt as the most unhinged, out of hand build show ever! Thank you guys for watching this video and everything else on Donut Media. Hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss anything. Follow me on Instagram at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut everywhere at Donut Media. Go do something fun with your friends. I'm gonna go back to filming high low.